everyone. This is the moment that I have been really nervous about, but looking forward to in equal measures. The thought of giving all you lovely people a speech has given me sleepless nights and nervous twitches. But now the day is here, I wish to thank every one of you for coming today to help us celebrate the marriage of my beautiful daughter Katie to the little parent Matt. I see before me now. All of my hopes, dreams, and plans for her future, she has fulfilled and succeeded. I am proud of what she has achieved in life and what she will achieve in the future. I am sure you will all, all agree that she is an absolutely beautiful bride. <laughs> to be 
the adjective souls, and then he said, which is my half which he did. Whilst eating the meal, Matt described my age and how we'd cook this meal step by step, and thought it was strange that he'd had to first add half a bottle of wine and reduce my half. Seems odd to add the wine to the sauce and then the whole half of the sauce down the sink. <laughs>
Thank you, Miss Susan. <laughs> If you don't know me that well, which is 40% of you, uh, it will get a bit weird. Um, <laughs> there will be like, moments like that, and then I'll just ruin them. So, uh, right now, um, on to you lot, or rather the rabble, as Katie called you during all of the year, uh, heading up to today. <laughs> It may just be the happiest man alive to be able to stand here today and say, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, on behalf of, let's get this out of the way, my wife and I. <laughs> Welcome to our wedding, and thank you sincerely for sharing this special day with us. It is an absolute privilege to be in the company of so many people that are important in our lives, and we're delighted to welcome you here to share our special day with us. Uh, some of you have come a long way, some not so much. <laughs> uh, uh, but all of you have travelled in the knowledge, knowing that you're going to at least have to pay £4.50 for an Australia, and, <laughs> and that is commitment. So <laughs> we really appreciate that. <laughs> now, as you know, uh, events like these don't just happen. We've been, Kate has been planning this wedding <laughs> for some time. I got the good news. Um, yeah, well, so when I say we, Kate has to do most of the work. As one of the best things about being a man is that weddings seem to just organise themselves. <laughs> uh, so, to Katie and everyone else who has helped organise today, I would like to say a big thank you. Um, Thank you to Danielle at Dali Fonseca, who really has been our lighting shining on her. She came in after the wrecking ball. That was fun. Thanks, <laughs> 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 She came in like that. after the wrecking ball uh, and fixed everything. And for that, we are eternally grateful. So, thank you so much. <laughs> we would like to thank the Philharmonic for this lovely venue and all of the catering and bar staff, uh, who I'm sure will be kept on their toes today. So, thank you as well. Finally, thanks to my year 10 pupils and neighbours. Uh, Stephanie and Charlotte for playing Woo! at reception. Yeah! Are you ready for this one? Your music was so beautiful, even the cake was in tears. Oh! <laughs> it really doesn't get any better than that, so. <laughs> Just going on that point, I'm sorry. If you hear anything dodgy over the next couple of speeches, um, please try and forget about it by September. <laughs> we'll appreciate it. Um, now, on to Tim and Sheila. Uh, I, can't, I can't let today go by without thanking my mum and dad for their love and support over the years and for welcoming Katie into our family. I know it's hard to believe, but I haven't always been as handsome, intelligent, dashing, so... <laughs> That's not... Darren Brown. That wasn't a fact. Who is athletic, wise, and a very modest man you see stood before you today. <laughs> Over the years, my mum and dad have helped me more than I deserve, and they have seen me through thick and thin. <laughs> Make me thick, yes. if I can be honest. <laughs> But they've always been there for me. They really should have received the medal for endurance. <laughs> they've always loved and supported me through every stage of my life, even during, I didn't see Judy's speech, my Kevin teenage, teenage stage. <laughs> that seemed to last well into my twenties. <laughs> and which Katie may argue hasn't ended yet. <laughs> so thanks to Mum and Dad for all the love, 
peace to them <laughs> and, and guidance you've given. And I hope I can make you as proud of me as I am of you. Aww. I love you dearly and thank you very much. <laughs> Pardon me. I would first like to thank Carl and Judy uh, for bringing up such a lovely daughter and thank you both for making me feel so welcome in your family. I am by no means perfect, but I love your daughter very much and I hope I can be everything you want from a son in law and all. <laughs> Thank you uh, also for raising a beautiful, intelligent, and stubborn daughter. <laughs> and of course, for letting me have her hand in marriage. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please be up to and raise your glasses to our moms and dads. Oh. Our moms and dads. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Please be seated. <laughs> Now, there's going to be a period of weddings that no one should look as beautiful as the bride or as handsome as the groom. And I am pleased to say that I've, heard, I've certainly had no competition on that score from the ushers. <laughs> or the best man. Ushers, <laughs> um, <laughs> ushers, thank you guys for all the help on the run up today and for today. Friends, old and new. You've travelled far and wide today. I love you, that's it. It's a shit to have my confetti though. But I gave you the list. One job. Sorry, it's. That's not a Bridesmaids, you all look lovely today. And I'm sure everyone here will agree. Yeah. Uh, thank you dearly for all the love and support you have given Katie over the years and for keeping her calm over the last 24 hours or so. A job I do not envy in the slightest. <laughs> thank you so much for organising a splendid interview for Katie and making sure she didn't do a runner today. <laughs> she loved you all and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Um, could we please join in, toast, in toasting the bridesmaids, please? <laughs> and the ushers, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Please be seated. That's what you're going to do now, sorry, please be seated. <laughs> right, here we go. Well, I suppose I should now say a few words about the lady to my left. Woo! The star of the show, Katie O'Keefe. Keeping the name. Right. <laughs> now, talk about the lady. <laughs> it's a nice day. I'm not going to say anything fake and cheesy like, oh, she's my best friend. They're all on those two tables there. Where are you? Who says that? <laughs> like, she doesn't even like fuzzy. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, so, no offense if anyone said that. <laughs> um, but she's ne definitely not my best. You know, he's never years ago, that's right. <laughs> so I'm going off. So. I'm going to get one chance to do this. Uh, so when I do say something nice and heartfelt, I think it will happen. So please cry or something. Because that's coming up shortly, thank you. 
I've learned in my time, running up to the wedding, that whenever Katie is right and I'm wrong, admit it. Whenever Katie's wrong and I'm right, just keep quiet. <laughs> When discussing going to cat, for example, Katie, Katie said that she wanted one. I said she didn't. Oh, sorry, I said I didn't. So we compromised and got a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is how it is now, but I guess that's okay. Cats are moving teenagers. She is. <laughs> Katie also has one hell of a bunch. And it's just a matter of time before her aim at throwing things improves. <laughs> And she actually hits me with something. Maybe even the cat. <laughs> Katie doesn't like spiders. Which is unusual as we met on the way. <laughs> Uh, 
the amount of texting was disgusting in the first few weeks, almost once a day. <laughs> Which for me was very odd. Even my mates mimicked my beeping phone. <laughs> I remember how thrilled I was uh, when they would do that noise and I would shout from across the pub, It's from me, ma! <laughs> uh, to many a strange look. What have I become? Was it possible that I really liked someone? Maybe even loved them? Well, you are looking at the answer today. Uh, seriously though, Katie, today you look simply stunning. I've never seen you look so beautiful as you do now, and I think everyone here will agree. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Um, taking a line from Katie's favourite poem would be an apt thing to do that sums up Katie's kind and caring approach to her fantastic work as a clinical psychologist and prior to life. Not the whole poem, though, because be honest. So here we go. She likes broken things, broken people. To her, if there was nothing to fix, there was nothing to love. Perhaps this is why Katie loves me the way she does. There's an awful lot to fix. Well, I can't wait for her to continue. Perhaps I'll never be fixed. Perhaps nobody here ever really is. But when the person repairing you is this one, who cares? Oh. 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 Uh, being able now to call you my wife is a privilege I will never tire from. It's truly an honour to call you my wife. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and raise a toast to my wife, to Katie. Katie. He's a guy that I've known for quite a while, in fact, since he was born. I can honestly say that his support and advice over the years has been truly invaluable. He is my younger brother, Andy, whom I love very much. Many people don't know that Andy lives in a parallel universe, <laughs> which causes him to invent fanciful stories. He really doesn't believe these stories to be true, and I thank you for humouring me of his speech. <laughs> Over to you. I think under the normal circumstances, I'd say, I have you follow that. But I've been waiting for this day for 30 years. Get <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, maybe. laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for being here today. As we celebrate the marriage and lifelong union of Matthew and Katie. Matthew alluded to, and for those of you that don't know me, my name is Andy, and I'm Matthew's best man. I can also confirm that I'm Matthew's younger and far better looking brother. That's just the wall. <laughs> well, it is, honestly, it is extremely humbling to stand here today as Matthew's best man. I really do love it to bits. Um, we were talking about this outside the area as well. Seeing you this happy, it makes the 80 pound train fare from London almost seem <laughs> like. <laughs> and I think it, it says a lot about the group when he chooses his brother as best man for his wedding day. Mostly, of course, it says, I have no friends. <laughs> Admittedly, we have been, and 
many, many years. Friends for the moment, I first understood what another brother actually was. Um, someone to look up to, someone to learn from, and someone to follow into any battle with all of that. <laughs> um, we were very similar as kids, and to be honest, I used to copy him and get a kind of hero sense. We both learned to play violin and piano. We went to the same schools, we sang in the same choirs, we even wore the same clothes. Um, yeah, hand me, hand me down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> More shockingly, would you believe it, for years we both had the same haircuts. The sands of time can be true. Weirdly, we also both ended up supporting Liverpool Football Club. Come on, Sam. This is where Tim comes in. Despite having an Evertonian for a father. Both sons turning out as reds. Like, come on. It's it's poor form. <laughs> Honestly though, no, thank, thank you, Tim, uh, father and dad. The, uh, the general indifference you gave us as children has turned out to be the greatest gift of all. <laughs> <laughs> and for today, for today is a special day. I guess I want to spend a few minutes exploring how this happy couple came to be. Looking directly at the loving, generous, and sensitive man that Katie's fallen for, I can clearly recall times in my childhood, in our shared childhood, when those cherished qualities were so very evident to my dear brother. <laughs> These qualities were perhaps less evident around my birthdays. Um, <laughs> Year after year, Matthew would manipulate me into asking Mum and Dad for a toy that he wanted. <laughs> by promising that he would then actually play with me. Oh. Oh. He'd be like, he'd be like, Andy, Andy, you know we should get Lego pirates. <laughs> and, like, like, pirates. and then there's me going, oh yeah, they will play with me. <laughs> he's, he's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I'm like, oh, I love Lego. Those qualities were again less evident typically around Christmas. I once bought him, you'll remember this, a 20 pound gift voucher, by the way, for 11 year old, that's like massive. Um, 20 pound gift voucher from Major Big, which he later used to purchase a Lord Aragon, Lord of the Rings poster <laughs> from HMV, <laughs> and presented it to me as my Christmas present. <laughs> And he did, he did also make dinner time to living health me. He sneaked meat products into my vegetarian dishes when I was looking for them. In case you're curious, his party piece was slipping bacon grits onto my peanut butter sandwiches. Matthew is dramatically 
Chinga from his wife. <laughs> But seeing as we all are gathered here today, you know, the hearts of being the national anthem, aren't we? There must have been something about Matthew that appealed to Katie. Admittedly, with Katie being a highly specialised clinical psychologist, it did occur to me in the past that perhaps her interest in Matthew could be purely scientific. <laughs> That's part of some sort of long term psychological study. Or maybe, just maybe, she does love him. Again, maybe she also got a huge research grant. I'm not speculating on that, you fell in love with him. Regardless, in order for us to find out for sure, I recently unearthed the online dating profile that Matthew was using seven years ago. Very true. The very tool through which in case you first met. As alluded to, the profile is on a matchmaking website called mysinglefriend.com. Yeah, recommend it. Found the numbers by the FMS of Pregnancy Review. Um, it was established well before all these mobile dating apps like Tinder appeared. And you know, the premise was very simple. You get your friend to write a profile on your behalf, and they highlight the reasons why they think the reader should go and date with you. I know Matthew mentioned there that it was a co-offering sort of partnership between me and the day, but I like to think it's quite ironic if you consider the possibility that Matthew might have enlisted a female friend to write for a while. <laughs> a female friend who clearly regarded Matthew as a completely undateable prospect prospect himself. <laughs> and granted, this isn't a likely scenario, as I did mention earlier, Matthew has no friends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know what maybe we're going to say. <laughs> <coughs> Honestly, Matthew has challenges when it comes to maintaining close knit friendships. Chiefly down to his actions and nights out in town. Hey! He also, he slips away, bang on midnight, the waste man Cinderella he is. <laughs> just, so, just so we can avoid getting in the round of drinks to be dodgy. Yeah! Yeah! his hard saved money on a chicken shop feast for one. <laughs> <laughs> which, which he only remembers come the morning thanks to the grease stains on his clothes. <laughs> anyway, back to my single friend on home. I gave it a good plug. And in all seriousness, the contents of the profile are genuinely too cringeworthy to read out. <laughs> like, I could have been wrong, right? Like, this is four pages. That is going to be his home. So, <laughs> but to give you a teaser, the first, object, the first objective of the encounter in describing Matthew as a human being is cardigan. <laughs> like, as in a frequent wearer of cardigans. <laughs> section of text in which Matthew is invited on the profile to respond to his character assassination. Um, sorry, profile. <laughs> um, with a closing statement, and I quote, no. <laughs> 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 I guess I'm easygoing. That's what he said. 
interested in a lot of things, too many to list. <laughs> And all music, really. <laughs> That's absolutely terrible. <laughs> right. <laughs> Interested in a lot of things, too many to list. <laughs> like, it's like you get bored of describing yourself halfway through the sentence. <laughs> a fan of sports and all music, really. <laughs> when you say that, you come across so risk of it. I bet if the profile asks you to choose one superpower, what well, any superpower to rule the world, you'll select general knowledge. <laughs> all music. A fan of all music. That's a lie. That's an absolute lie. Like I know that he's head of um, head of music. So, yeah, so. yeah, head of music, departments at Bellevue Academy, and like he is doing a brilliant job. That's going to be quite a fight today. But when has anyone ever gone on a first date and said, "Oh yeah, I do like Kanye's new album"? <laughs> what I'm proper bang into right now is this new compilation of 9th century Gregorian chants. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the only conclusion I can draw from Matthew's massively underwhelming self summary is that he actually contravened the rules and regulations of my single friend on Tom by writing the entire profile himself. <laughs> and by this last section, he was simply running out of steam. I get it, you know, it was probably the midday on a Sunday, you were a bit hungover and hungry, and you just wanted it to be done with so you could crack on. Like Pringles chicken. And yet, the miracle of life. Despite the bias and profile so woeful, I didn't have the heart to delve into today. With the one chance I had. Matthew still managed to find the remarkable case. Truly baffling. An intelligent, beautiful, warm hearted young woman. A marathon runner with the nose of the a fully trained doctor capable of administering a plethora of psychological therapies. Just this minute, educating, wading through the bleak mire of creepy men's profile. <laughs> Through to you, a saviour, <laughs> a knight in shining armour, and there you are, <laughs> resplendent in a cardigan. <laughs> <laughs> a man who is interested in a lot of things. <laughs> Bit of a, you know, conversation break. <laughs> How does the sense go for them? 
had a spark of a conversation with the audience, unleashed the infamous charm, beef charm, he calls it, discussed any of the sports, he was allegedly a fan. <laughs>
Macht dann.